concern is growing tonight as flames light up the Los Angeles hillsides. This is what I think that everyone is missing. This is my recent total toxic burden. There is a page and a half of toxins that I have never seen in my lab before that are now very present. So the air was four times cleaner inside than outside. Normally indoor air is four or five times dirtier than outdoor yeah. air. I'm not trying to create this video to induce fear. In a big city like LA, with a lot of pollution, you'd expect like 700,000. Okay. And today we have... If you live in LA, this is the most important video on the air quality situation that you're ever going to watch. I'm Kayla Barnes-Lenz. I am an expert in female longevity and therefore I really, really care about my health and I really care about my environment. For years now, I've been doing toxin testing called the Total Toxic Burden, which is environmental testing. It's looking at molds, heavy metals, mycotoxins, environmental toxins, things like BPA, PFAS, a variety of different things. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that I've done. I put a lot of this out on socials in the form of reels, but I wanted to do a long form video so we have everything in one place. Okay, so let's talk about what I did as soon as the fires broke out, and that was begin to start to understand the air quality. So the easiest thing for you to measure, so a lot of times if you have air filters, like I have Jaspers, there's something called PM 2.5. And that is measuring the amount of particulate matter under a certain size. So these smaller particulate matters are more harmful to the body. So in my home, for the entire duration of the fires from start to finish, the PM 2.5 has been roughly between two to four at max. So I'm going to walk you through everything that I've done. This is a developing situation. I'm trying to find more environmental experts. I'm doing more lab testing to really get to the truth of the matter. And to be honest with you, I'm deciding whether or not I stay in LA, if that's a risk for my health, if it's a risk for the fact that I want to conceive this year. So my husband and I are very seriously considering moving to a state with healthier air. So step one, this is what I did. I purchased this at home air things air monitor. So this is telling me levels of radon PM 2.5, which PM 2.5 is what everybody seems to be focused on right now, right? So I just had an environmental specialist over and he measured the PM 2.5 and in heavily polluted cities like LA, it's normally around 500 to 700,000. It was 1.5 PM, so it's clearly very elevated, but PM is just the particulate matter. So that's telling us how many of this size particle is in the air. So one thing that's a fact is the particulate matter is increased. If we were in like the mountains or somewhere really clean, we'd expect total particulates in the five to 25,000 range. Okay. If we were in a small city, 100,000, 150,000, a heavily polluted city, two to 400,000. Mm -hmm. um, in a big city like LA, with a lot of pollution, you'd expect like 700,000. Okay. And today we have, we have 1.23 million particles. Oh gosh. An extra 700,000 particles. So every breath we're taking right now is just really not a clean yeah, breath so of air. I think so let's get you back inside <laughs> and uh, shut the door. <sighs> When we did the test inside, the particulate matter was average. It was normal and it was good in a healthy range. We're talking about this particulate matter. So particulate 2.5, which is these little bit larger particles. Then you have particulate matter 10, which are much larger. And then we also have particulate matter PM1, which these are probably the most dangerous because they can bypass the body's defense mechanisms. So now it was 330,000. Mm. So the air was four times cleaner inside than outside. Normally indoor air is four or five times dirtier than outdoor yeah. air. In this case, your indoor air is four to five times cleaner. Also, when I got here, I did it quick. It was about 250,000, mm -hmm. but we had the door open for a minute. So that okay. elevated it. The last thing that we're looking for on this particular monitor are VOCs or volatile organic compounds. These come from things like paints, furnishings. They can be in beds. They can be in non-organic mattresses but these VOCs can cause long-term health consequences. So let me walk you through some of the changes that I observed with just this monitor, and then we're gonna go a lot deeper. A few days after the fire, I had the monitor inside, and the VOCs are at reasonable levels. So we're somewhere around 80 to 100 inside with the air filtration. When I put the monitor outside a few days post-fire, it was about 950, almost a thousand. So when you think about hazards and levels of these VOCs, 
you want it as low as possible, but when you get to about a thousand, this is a high, super high risk where interventions need to occur right away. This is what I think that everyone is missing. Yes, we can understand the particle matter. Yes, you can have air filtration that can reduce the particle matter. This is all great. Inside the home, everything looks good in terms of particle matter. But what are those particles made up of? So I took it a step further. I do a toxin test called the Total Toxic Burden by Vibrant Wellness that we do at my clinic. And I have one from a couple months ago. I have an entire YouTube video on it. You can see it below, we'll link it. And then I have one from Midfire. So the fire started on the 7th. I got the lab on the 18th and everything changed. So heavy metals, molds and mycotoxins that I believe is from the burning homes and the burning forests. So the mold spores can be released into the air, which if you don't reduce those amount of mycotoxins, we all know that mold can be a significant issue. The environmental toxins that I saw an increase in my labs are absolutely astounding. So I went from having very low levels of BPA, which is found in plastics, um, to high levels of BPA. And now we're gonna talk about environmental toxins. This to me is probably one of the biggest concerns because we had things like batteries, cars, homes, plastics, toys, um, electrical components, smartphones, smart TVs, all of these things being burned at an incredibly high rate. We had, I believe, over 15,000 structures burn. So if you think about what was in all those structures, cleaning products, incredibly toxic things now are pluming into the air. So yes, everyone's talking about the particle size and reducing the particle matter in the air, very important. But the question really is, is how much of that particle matter that we now know is increased is incredibly toxic to our health. So there are direct links from a lot of the toxins that I just mentioned to things like cancer, to things like uh, autoimmune conditions, to things like birth defects, issues with fertility, you name it, it's there. So we'll include again, more information on all the toxins that I'm seeing in, in my blood labs. I will say that I did do a therapeutic plasma exchange after the tox burden during the fires. I have one pending to see what did the TPE do. Um, I will share those results. I'm also doing a really significant detox. So I'm doing a lot of vitamin C, I'm doing quercetin, I'm doing a lot of sulforaphane, I'm using something called Brock Shot, doing sauna every single day. I was doing it five times per week, I'm now doing it daily. Of course, air filtration is a way to protect yourself. You know, people are saying masks, but after having a conversation with my friend who kind of specializes in this, N95 masks are simply not going to do enough because it's allowing airflow coming in and out. Truthfully, masks for situations like this, unless you're gonna use a P100 mask, which mm -hmm. means you need to be clean shaven and fit tested and use a respirator, mm -hmm. and they're not very fun to, I'd rather not go for a walk. Yeah. Like if you're using an N95, those are like for splatters and yeah, things like good. that. They're, they're literally open, and I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I wouldn't do any, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to Muscle Beach. Yeah. I wouldn't do like an intense cardiovascular workout outside. Mm -hmm. I would exercise inside with filtered air. So this is what I know as of now, we need to be thinking about the actual toxin exposure, not just the amount of particles in the air. I also want to address this entire AQI situation, so the air quality index. So right now in LA, it says it's about 54, which is about the same as yesterday. So when we look at this on our phones, it says the air is moderate, right? And I was looking at the air AQI um, just days after the fire, and it also said moderate. At one point, it actually said that the air was better than it is standardly in LA. I don't think that this is an accurate reference point because the AQI is only measuring ground level ozone, particulate matter PM10 and PM2.5, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen. So again, it's not measuring any of those super harmful chemicals. Yes, some of them, but it's not measuring uh, lead or asbestos or aluminum or thallium or any of the environmental toxins that we know can be related to health problems. So um, I'm not trying to create this video to induce fear, but I do think it's important because to be honest, if you look at your phone and you're looking at, oh, the air quality is moderate. It's been moderate in LA for the last 10 years or however long I've lived here. No, there's clearly something different in the air and something's going on. I don't want to let this put your health at risk if this isn't really the full picture. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is what is the ongoing risk? So 
we don't yet know, right? So I'm just going to hypothesize here based off of experts I've spoken to, environmental specialists, medical doctors, um, and just talk a little bit through this. So we know that when 9-11 occurred, which was a few buildings um, in comparison to 15,000 buildings here in LA, that there's now about 130,000 people enrolled in a medical program supported by the government because of their ongoing health issues based on their exposures to these toxins from the two buildings burning um, in 9-11. So people are dealing with issues like cancer and autoimmune conditions and other various types of health conditions based on their exposure to the air, which at the time it sounds like the EPA said was safe. So we haven't really heard too much that I'm aware of from the LA you know, government about if they are safe or not. They have told us that we, they would not be doing um, you know, chemical testing for the toxins, for the environmental toxins, for the heavy metals. I don't anticipate them doing that, so we kind of have to take it into our own hands. But the concern over the course of the next two years and something that's on my mind and on my mind for my family and my husband, and I'm sharing it with you because you may want to think about this too, is over the course of the next two years when they're cleaning up all the fire debris, cleaning up all the toxic materials, all of that's going to be reintroduced to the air. The wind will then blow it all over. They're estimating that these toxins can travel between one and 200 miles um, away. So a lot of people have asked me, how's Orange County, how's Laguna Beach? I think you have to do your own testing to be sure. You can test your body, you can test your home for things like heavy metals and environmental toxins. But my concern is what's going to happen over the course of the next few years. I'm personally not willing to expose myself to uh, this sort of pollution that I've seen in my blood labs for years to come. That's everything that I know right now. Uh, just to reiterate, my top concern is not necessarily the particle matter. While yes, that is concerning, my main concern is what is the particle matter made up of and how long are these toxins that I see on my blood labs going to be lingering in the body, lingering in the air? When and will they be reintroduced through all of the cleanup and the rebuilds? Um, these are very important questions. So subscribe to this channel. I will be posting updates since this is now really just taking over and it's incredibly immediate for health concerns and longevity. But yes, subscribe and I'll be posting more.